super chat here. Yep. High finest. What so do you say, everyone uh, seems so thrilled about Arc Beta with the phase alignment feature. Does Odyssey Multi EQX do the same thing? Do you need to adjust? Oh man, I don't know about this Arc Beta. What is Arc so, Beta? So Arc Beta <laughs> is Anthem Room Correction. I would imagine. Okay. Is that I I. I've been hearing a little bit here and there about it. You know, people are messaging me like, like saying, Hey, is this, is, you know, is this kind of like multi sub optimizer? So I have no idea what it is. You guys. Yeah. Mm -mm. I, gotta have to look I know it arc. Up. I know arc. Um, they came out with Genesis. Yeah. Like what last year or the year before Yeah, I used it upstairs. Yeah. It's good. Mm -hmm. But I haven't heard of the beta. I don't See? know what beta this is. Yeah. <clears throat> Some arc beta. You pull that up. See, let's look at it together and see what it is. Okay. Do, 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 do. Arc Genesis Beta? Is it Arc yes. Genesis Beta? That's what it looks like because it says that was one month ago. Oh, okay. Hands on. Wonder if yours can, can do this because I know you wanted me to check out your anthem. Wonder if, yeah. if it can do whatever this does. So, what no, is this? It, it'll only be available for the newer ones. Ah, uh, like okay. Ones. It's what all good. Somebody wants to buy my. Oh, okay. dude, I, I got somebody who's just like, hey, man, I want to do a. Do you have any equipment laying around? <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, why? And they're like, oh, well, I want to do a second home theater if uh, you got equipment. So I might, I might be selling a bunch of stuff soon, including the Anthem, even though that was one of the better yeah. receivers that I've had in here. Uh, I'm trying to see. Does it, does it say anything about what it does? Newly developed Anthem auto phase distance and time alignment for up to four independent subwoofers on the MRX 40 series AVM 7090. Um, phase distance and alignment. Oh, okay. phase so, distance and time alignment. Okay. Yeah, I just pulled up Gene's. Gene dropped a video on that today. Uh -huh. um, he's got some screenshots and there's some phase um, adjustment at a frequency. So it looks like they're just using all pass filters. So Welcome to what Car Audio has been doing for about a decade, guys. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, seriously. Dude, you know what? I've said it so many times. I, I will say it again. The AV receiver is the caboose end of the technological train. Like it Pro is Audio has been doing it for 15 or 20 years easy. Yeah. So it's just crazy to me. Like everybody, no offense, but mm -hmm. people are like, oh my God. And I'm just like, yeah, dude, this stuff has been around for a long time. Yeah. It's crazy to me that home audio, like Chana is saying, is so far behind. Yeah. It's just this. I wonder. I wonder. Do you think that some of this stuff has been available to like me, maybe like the professional like cinema spots? Uh, like home, probably. You know? No, no, no. Probably because a lot of them will. They're not using Denon. You know what I'm saying? Like, not, yeah, yeah. yeah they're no, using they're not using anything on that. And and I do know what some of them use. I don't know. We you know what's popular now, but I know what was popular like about a decade ago. Um, and they're using sophisticated like pro audio mm. DSP, you know what I'm saying? So which which has that kind of stuff built into it. So I, I was about to say that I have seen some stuff, some pretty advanced DSP stuff that I can't talk about that I I think actually has has been in car audio already. I was about to see, see if I could prove you wrong, but I'm like, no, nah, I think that it's probably been well, in like a, a lot of them even have um, horn profiles loaded into them. A lot of the pro audio stuff does. And you say, I'm using these horns, and it'll make equalization based on that horn profile. It's already preloaded. So. Mm. I've seen somewhere they even know, like, uh, like if you buy a sub from the same manufacturer, they say, okay, this is the settings that you, these are the settings you use so that they're time aligned. Like, they know, Seems, you know, how I they work together. That. Like, if you buy the speakers and the subwoofers together, yeah, they'll tell you how to, to match them up properly. Um, what else we got? Yeah, so sorry, we don't know too much about this uh, yeah. yet. But but I can say that if it is phase adjustment at frequency, then yes, that's a great thing to have. Yeah. It's incredible. I was actually using a car audio piece in my home theater because it had that. And then I switched over to a rain. So what does that uh, allow you to do? I'm, I'm very interested. So, so like if you have, so you can, all right, so you know how you have phase is just zero and 180, right? So it's either in phase or out of phase mm. is, is kind of how we think of it. But in the real world, it's never like that. Your phase angle is always like somewhere between zero and 180. Mm -hmm. So you can set it to 45 degrees, uh, 75 degrees. You can set it to whatever 
angle, phase angle that you want in order to get proper summation between two different speakers. Mm -hmm. Right. So it, it's kind of like if you if you take a speaker and you have them, everything is perfect and you have an ideal world and you put the subwoofer with the floor standing speaker and you set the subwoofer phase to zero degrees and everything is perfect. The phase aligns, you have perfect summation at the crossover. Everything is time aligned. Everything is perfect. Okay. It's like, that's the ideal world, mm. but you never have that. But you also don't have the opposite where it's completely out of phase. You have somewhere in between zero and 360 degrees. You have somewhere in between and the best place to set the phase adjustment would be somewhere in between there, between zero and 360 degrees. So that's what an all pass filter with these type things will allow you to do is they'll say, oh, you want me to adjust the phase angle at this frequency and you want to adjust the angle to be this, like this angle, mm. basically. So that's how you typically use it to be like, yeah, yeah. more precise with like, the- Like with when the you're band. tuning, yeah, when you're tuning, you, you can just pick a band of test tones is usually what I do for subwoofer and the the mains. And let's say my crossover is at 80 hertz, like my, mm. my acoustic- point crossover is somewhere in that region so i'll play like 63 hertz i'll play 80 hertz and then i'll play 110 hertz or i guess 100 hertz i'll play those third octave tones mm -hmm. and i'll say where's the spot where it blends the most and then i'll just adjust the phase alignment for that crossover so i'll go from zero degrees to 10 degrees to 20 degrees and i'll just work that until it lines up in phase and then when you do it's a lot more louder everything is more full mm -hmm. everything is locked in up front it's not coming from different places Right. So, well, uh, uh, I guess for somebody who may not know as much about DSP, because I know you're advanced, you know, I do a lot of DSP myself. And so they might say, hey, you know, my SVS has it's not, you know, uh, zero or 180. Yeah. Or you can do 45. And, you know, and I know I, I know the answer. Right. But they might say, you know, mine's a phase knob. Right. So I have a I can but adjust in between too. Right. They right. So. That. So I thought that, and it yeah. uh, turns out that it's actually not. It's just time delay, which is super annoying because you can have things set up in time perfectly. Mm -hmm. So I think the easiest way to explain that is if you take two speakers, put them right on top of each other, like you take a mid-range and you put it on top of another mid-range and you make them occupy the exact same space, they are time aligned. There's nothing you can do to make them not time aligned. Mm -hmm. Now you have both of them. You got sound, right? But now you take one of them and you flip the phase. Now you have no sound. But they're still perfectly time aligned, so they can be perfectly time aligned and not in phase. So right. you have things, right? You have time, and then you have phase. They're two different things. Uh, I think people get confused about that. You know, I know we're getting pretty technical right now, but I think it's kind of confusing to some people that, you know, they think that phase has to be related to the time. Like you can't, like they're connected. You know, in their right, in their mind. right. So time is a function of phase, right. um, but you can also adjust the phase without adjusting the time delay. Okay. So when you when you adjust the time delay, you actually shift the mm. signal time, right? So when the speaker or when the sound leaves that speaker, so you can actually like move it forward or backwards relative. So it's always relative to another speaker that's playing. Because if you just have the one speaker that's playing, you don't care what time it fires. I guess but you care you about know, it relative to the other speaker. And when they're out of phase, then you have weird stuff going on. He Maybe, I don't know if this is a good example or not, but it kind of makes sense to me. But you know how they say you, know, you shouldn't make you shouldn't mix sealed and ported because you know they could be aligned until you get to the port and then the port is going to be out of phase and then yeah. you may get some cancellation below the port, right? So yeah. with an all all pass fil filter, would it be possible to you know have everything aligned and then when the port does its weird phase thing at that point to like rotate the phase there so it's aligned the entire way? Is that, is that so possible? you you would. You could do that, but it will only be relative to the other sounds that's going on from like the other speakers, right? So you, you it's you can't fix the phase for that one that one point in space. You're not going to hear that difference. I mm. guess is what I'm trying to say. Okay, interesting. Yeah, interesting it's weird. It's a little bit more advanced, I guess, for than. Uh, uh, yeah, no, I mean, I think I really do think the best way to think about it is, is just like if you're out in a if you're out in a field somewhere and you have two speakers playing and they're, they're physically, I mean, you can't physically do it, but just imagine that you had two speakers that were occupying the exact same space, mm -hmm. you know, and they're both playing the same sound. Well, it, you have sound, but as soon as you flip the polarity of one of them, they cancel out. Right. So 
but they're from they're firing from the exact same point of space. So the time is the exact same. It's just the relative phase between the two mm-hmm. is offset. So that that's one, how you can have time versus phase. That one JL Audio Tune Four that you, yeah. uh, I think you linked to it or I anyway I saw a video about it and they they did a pretty excellent job of uh, job of explaining it. Like they show you how to do the entire process of of uh, you know calibrating pretty much everything. You know, oh, yeah. the speakers yeah. or the stuff, and they're like, "All right, everything's good. Yeah, everything's time aligned, and you got the frequency response you want." But the left is not, uh, you know, you want more phase coherence between the left and right. What do you do? Yeah. Everything's already set. Like that's when we can use these all pass filters to. to yeah, you rotate it you oh. rotate the phase so everything oh, sounds more cohesive. Yeah, I get it now. Mm. Yeah. Um. So yeah, that's that's interesting stuff. What else? We got a lot of. Now, if you can't catch the show, we do have an audio version at anchor.fm slash daily hi-fi. So make sure to go on over there if you like to listen to the show.